All right, for more on this controversial topic, Corey Barnett joins us. He's the owner and director of the District Growers here in Washington, D.C. He's a medical marijuana cultivation center here in the city. And Kevin Savitt, who joins us from Boston, he's the author of Reefer Sanity, Seven Great Myths About Marijuana. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. And, you know, we've been talking about the subject pretty much not just today, but throughout the last year, uh, even when Colorado and Washington State both legalized the use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. Let's start with you, Kevin, in Boston. You talk about the myths about marijuana. What's one thing that the opponents against the use of marijuana have wrong? Well, a, a huge myth, and actually uh, this has been this is really pervasive, is that legalization would actually bring money for governments. I think you also quoted a, a federal government report talking about the billions of dollars that alcohol and tobacco bring in. But what you didn't say is the second half, which is that for every dollar of tax revenue we bring in for alcohol and tobacco, we spend 10 in social costs. So you might be able to bring 15 billion in, for example, for alcohol one year, but you're spending $150 billion on roadside accidents, on absenteeism and an unproductive workplace, on things like kids not able to go to school or function, on emergency room admissions, which is now a growing problem because right, today's so you're, marijuana you're basically saying is not the marijuana the, the of the use past. of pot, obviously there is a social yeah. cost to it. Corey, right. um, let, let me, We'll come back to that in just a moment here, but okay. I want to talk about, sort of set up this, this topic, is that Washington State and Colorado, and, and in addition, 18 other states, so a total of 20 states, allow the use of pot for recreation of some sort. But the federal government essentially says pot, it's illegal to use. Correct. A explain to our international viewers, this is a very strange phenomenon, that the federal okay. government says one thing, yet the states have said, no, wait a minute, we decided it's okay. Right, right. Well, I mean, obviously the, the federal government sets our federal laws or what have you, but a lot of times when we have grassroots change in this country, it comes up from states changing laws locally in their states first, it taking on a wave across the country, and then ultimately, hopefully what happens is that the federal government ultimately makes a broader change that affects the entire country. Not only do we have 20 states that currently uh, allow for at least a med medicinal use of cannabis, but there are several states, uh, particularly some in the South, that have said that as soon as the federal government makes, their, makes a change there, that they will also uh, follow suit. So there's likely to be more and more states, and ultimately I assume the majority of the states in the Union will, will probably legalize it well, now. Phil, but, I, but I'm not Kevin, sure, Phil. I, I, think we should yeah. I think we should separate the medical discussion and the legalization re recreational. We seem to be muddling those, which is very common, unfortunately, in the debate. There's no doubt that there are components within marijuana that have medical properties. In fact, we need to be studying those. I argue we need to be delivering them at pharmacies so that people actually know what they're getting, not the, not folk uh, medicine that's, that, you know, that, that's then being sold under the pretense of having some kind of scientific standard but actually real medicine. Let's do that. We don't smoke any medicine. We don't smoke opium to get the effects of morphine. We don't need to smoke marijuana or eat it raw in order to get its effects. So that's the medical discussion on the one hand. The, re the legalization, the recreational is a, is a totally different discussion. And, and the reason you're seeing, I think, states kind of going towards this is that there's really a huge multi-billion dollar movement to do this because it, it is about the money. You said follow the money and it is exactly about the money. It is about big tobacco and the liquor law. Well, well, essentially be, be, being mimicked for being Kevin, marijuana. Since, We're going to have that. Kevin, since yeah. you brought this up, let me ask you this. Sure. You brought up the idea that the revenue from uh, right. drinking and alcohol and other drugs and the social cost of it all. So let me ask you this. Is marijuana more dangerous than, say, alcohol or smoking? Well, I, I don't know if that's even a relevant question to this. Alcohol is legal not because it's less harmful than marijuana, but it, it's, it's legal because of a cultural history that we have. Frankly, smoking cigarettes are more addictive than heroin that, that we, and more addictive than crack. We wouldn't therefore say, well, that means because smoking is legal, crack should be now legal too. It does, on across different harms, drugs are more harmful than another. I can smoke a tobacco cigarette and drive a car with zero impairment. I can build a building with zero impairment. However, my addiction chances are one in three, which is very high. Okay. Whereas for that, marijuana, that, that, smoking and driving is harmful, addiction is less. It depends. That, that is a fair point. Um, you know, there are some serious issues here before we get, yeah. uh, you know, overly flippant, I guess, about the legalization of marijuana. There are some serious side effects that come with marijuana, especially when it comes to operating a vehicle or, or right. doing jobs where it requires right, you right, with 100% right, right. attention, right? But, but in every state that has a medicinal law or a recreational law, uh, none of those states allow you to 
drive a vehicle while impaired or you can't or drive and drink. Yeah, for you example. can't do those things anyway. And so, like, you but know, see, that's irrelevant because you can't with alcohol either. Yet the incidences of alcohol-related, for example, crashes or alcohol-related arrests, even yeah, though those but, are illegal, but you, what still you don't want, are what you much don't do higher is because the use is so high. That, that yeah. you know, let's keep it illegal because people might drive. You don't sit back and say that, you know, because people are subject to doing, you know, different things in different yeah. places that, you know, well, we should better, we're better off by just keeping this, this drug right. that has the medicinal value Gentlemen, illegal. I've got another minute or so to go. Um, yeah. So final sure. comment. Kevin, let me start with you. Sure. Uh, what would be a good solution in your mind? What would be a reasonable solution? Already 18 states have it for, for medical use. Two states have it for, for free for all use for, for either direction. Where do we go from here? Well, I think we study the medicinal properties, deliver it in a non-smoked way at pharmacies so people get it from real doctors. I mean, medical marijuana in California and other states is a complete joke. It's not about medicine. The reason the American Medical Association is against legalization and not in favor, the American Public Health Association, all those treatment groups that you said might benefit from legalization, they're against it because we know that it would be a real public health problem if we legalize something, it would be advertised, we'd have another big tobacco on our hands, and we'd be fighting them for the next All right. 50 That's years. That's just like uh, factually Corey, you get the last word. I mean, you know, the, the fundamentally, if we take a drug and we study it and we, we, we introduce it into the process and into the system the way that it's supposed to happen, we've proven time and time again in this country that we can introduce drugs into our system and they can be used responsibly. So no one is sitting back suggesting that, hey, if we introduce cannabis into the marketplace that all of a sudden everyone's going to go out and, and, and smoke their lives away or anything like that. But what we are saying, uh, and, and what, I, what I guess the guest is, is, is implying that, you know, if we legalize cannabis, then the world goes to, you know, pot, for, forgive know. the pun. We're, we're that's just that. absolutely Guys, not we're true. Guys, end it there. I have learned a, uh, <laughs> much more about pot than I expected to over the last five, six minutes. Corey Barnett, Kevin Sabat, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to get much more on our top story now uh, with Mike Walton.